Shalom, brothers and sisters. So let's just quickly touch on BRICS 2023. It's happening this week. The 15th BRICS Summit will be held from the 22nd to the 24th of August at the Santon Convention Center in South Africa. The great news for South Africans is if you live in Santon or in those areas around Joburg, you will have no load shedding between the 22nd and the 24th while they're busy with their BRICS conference because that's how this country runs. If they're doing something like this, they'll make sure the lights stay on. There's no way they're going to embarrass themselves. But for the rest of us that don't live near Santon, that'll be normal load shedding. Among the attendees will be heads of state of Brazil, India, China, and South Africa, obviously. Vladimir Putin will not be in attendance, with Russia being represented by Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. A total of 40 countries, 40, have expressed their interest in joining BRICS, while 23 countries have formally applied already. And that includes Argentina, Iran, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Indonesia, Thailand, Cuba, Egypt, and Nigeria. So I don't even know how they're going to pronounce that. It'll be as bad as the alphabet soup LGBTQIA plus 2S blah 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 with this whole BRICS thing. A new common currency has been touted for some time as a way to reduce the dominance of the US dollar in international trade. 80% <clears throat> of global trade is settled in US dollars and bypass Western style political economy and financial regimes, providing more accessible international trade avenues. So an attack on the dollar. The theme covers five key priorities for 2023. So besides their one money system, which is going to tie in with what's coming, these are their themes for this thing happening this week. Addressing climate change challenges. Revamping education and skills development. Maybe Bill Gates with his AI angle. Leveraging the African continental free trade area. Promoting post-pandemic recovery. Get ready for the next one. Strengthening global cooperation at a time when all countries are on edge and everybody wants to kill everybody else. Sounds like a good plan. I think only one guy is going to get this right in a false way before Jesus has to come fix the whole mess himself. It is the first summit that the leader of a founding member has been prevented from attending in person because of the threat of the ICC, the International Criminal Court, arrest warrant, right? South Africa, as a signatory to the Rome Statute, the governing treaty of the ICC, which was ratified by Parliament and enshrined in the Constitution, is obliged to arrest Putin if he attends. So Putin will attend via Zoom. But let me just add here quickly. We were quite happy to have him here, and we were even talking about quitting the ICC to make it happen. There is no way we, South Africa, are going to try and arrest Putin from Russia when Russia and China are the big dogs in this alliance that can crush us like a bug at this stage of the game. There's no way. Our leaders would have rolled over and had their belly scratched and have him here anyway. I think the reason that Putin's dialing in with Zoom is so that he can make sure South Africa doesn't take more heat right now and we can still kind of play a neutral ground in the political turmoil in the world game right now. So by us saying we're going to have the warrant and we stay part of the ICC, the West goes, oh, maybe they're not that bad. They're cool. They're just caught in between a rock and a hard place. No, we're not. We're with Russia and China and people don't want to hear me say this, but our leaders have sold us out long time ago. The game is just being played to position South Africa neutral at this stage of the game. That will change very radically and quickly in the days ahead, though. BRICS combined has 42% of the world's population, 27% of global GDP, and 20% of international trade. BRICS accounted for 21% of South Africa's global trade in 2022, of which China accounted for 15%, and India 6%. That's now. Now add in all those countries, those 40 countries that want to join, and everything tilts 
in the other direction. Now what this is, is a preparation, a play on getting everyone's mindsets, leaders and everybody, to the point where they are ready for this type of thing. A new monetary system, new working together, everyone coming together under one umbrella. And whether it's here or it's NATO and Europe and those countries, they're going to realize in the crisis that's lying at the door that they need to actually bring everybody together and join them under one umbrella, one leader, one currency, one system of control. This is all preparation for that. So I hope that gives you a little bit more information on what's going down here this week. And we'll keep watching as it develops. God bless. Keep looking up. Shalom.